Well, good morning, church. Are you excited to be here this morning to worship together? Anybody else? I am. So let's stand, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and let's just worship him this morning. God, I thank you so much just for who you are. Lord, thank you for the, the privilege that we get to come as one body to worship you. God, we are here to lift you high. We are here to sing praises to you, not to anybody else, but to you, Lord. You are worthy of it all and more. God, we just ask you to come and do what you do. We love you and give this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Worship with us this morning.
God we serve. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you to church this morning. More importantly, I want to welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit. I'm so glad the Lord is in our midst because we're gathered in his name. And we're so glad you can worship with us. I want to acknowledge some uh, special people, important people. We got a lot of folks tuning in online as well. Uh, not only from our church family around here, also several from our Vernon church family. Could you say hello to them? We love y'all. We're so thankful that you can be with us. Uh, there's no distance in the spirit. Amen. And look, what, what I'm about to do, I know is a little bit out of our usual service order, but it's something the Lord directed me to do, and so it's completely in order, I believe. I want to ask the prayer team if they would come at this time, because uh, we just sang some powerful things. And I don't ever want just songs to get, because we like the music, we like the beat, whatever. We miss the testimony of what we're declaring. We miss the scriptural truth that God has for us. You know, I believe this. I believe if we're not careful, we can leave doors open spiritually for the enemy in our life. You might believe that. You, you don't want to do that. You want to close those doors. We've taught on that a lot recently. But you know what? We also can be open and receptive to receive what God wants to do in our life. And, and I just want to follow the, the leading of the Holy Spirit in this moment. God spoke to me this morning while I was praying for our services. Two things that I believe with all of my heart because they line up with the word of God and God confirmed his word in my heart is that God wants to heal people and he wants to reach people now please understand I'm not trying to tug at your emotions or give you some goosebumps I'm trying to share with you what God spoke to my heart if you're in this place this morning and you fall into either of those categories or both of them you say, I need healing in my body, or someone you love, someone you care about. I know there's a lot of disease running rampant. There's stuff other than COVID going on in this world. You may have someone battling with cancer or, or heart disease, whatever it might be. But you know what? The Bible says that Jesus took stripes on his back for our healing. And I don't know why this has become in question. That speaks of our healing right now. Yes, we have healing in eternity. But y'all, I'm saved right now by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And the word of God says we can receive healing by the atonement provided to us by Jesus Christ. Do you believe Jesus is still Lord? Amen. He's, his name is above all other names, even sickness and disease. If you need healing in your body, and perhaps even more importantly, if you have a loved one, if you have a friend, a family member that, that, that does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, can I tell you time is of the essence? And I want to pray for people. I want, I want you, while they lead us in worship, they're going to continue to worship. Don't let it distract you from worshiping God. But will you move from where you're at? If you have somebody, you, you will allow us to stand in agreement with you, to pray for, uh, call out their name with you, and ask for the Holy Spirit to draw them to salvation. If you have a need in your physical body, you need healing. Can I tell you, it can be more than physical healing. If you need emotional, spiritual healing, Jesus is in this place because we're gathered in his name. And he stands ready able and willing to minister to you this morning so can I pray over you and will you just move as I pray if you'll, if you'll let us pray with, with somebody we're going to stay here the whole time during worship and just worship God and can we just turn our hearts to the Lord Lord we give this time to you and God I believe that you want to minister to your people so they can be a light for you in this world God it's about souls being saved so I speak healing in this place deliverance in this place so we can be a testimony of you and for you in Jesus name and all God's people said amen let's worship the Lord together
Altars are still open. If you if you feel the call and the need to come down, come and join us this morning. You're so good, God. You're so good. Now as the road leads me, I'll follow where your spirit leads. Broken. As my life may be, I will give you every piece, and I hear you call. I am available. I say. Yes, Lord, I am available. Here I am with open hands, counting on your grace again. Less of me and more of you. Just want to see you move, and I.
goodness in your presence. I want you to stand upon this scriptural truth, church. When we give everything to God, guess what the enemy is allowed to take hold of? Nothing. Not a thing. So, if you're willing, if you want to do this, would you join me by faith right now in just saying, God, I give control of my life to you. I entrust the protection of my family to you. My physical health, the ability to protect me physically, forgive us, God, where we thought we could do it on our own. I repent, Lord, of the times I thought I could figure stuff out better than you. Lord, we repent. We, 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 this is more than about emotion or, or just feeling, feeling good, God. We, we just want to know that you are good. We declare that you are God, you are Lord Jesus, and everything is about you. So right now we give you everything. We entrust everything to you. You are our supply. You're our source. You're our Savior and Lord. If you believe that, would you give God the praise he's worthy of right now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to you. I just, I want to say thank you for your sincerity in worship, worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And I just know God's presence is here. And I, I have a word that the Lord has given me to give to the church. And I pray you'll just be good soil to receive it. Again, I just want to welcome you. Welcome those tuning in online. I want to say, when you're online, I know you can't come down to the altar area and pray. Would you please leave your prayer needs in the comments or, or mail, email them to us, mail them to us, whatever. Send up smoke signals. I don't care. We just want to stand in agreement with you because I believe there is power in prayer, not because of us, but because of the one we are praying to. So we want to stand in agreement with you. Send those requests in and, and we will pray for you and pray with you the prayer of faith. Could I ask you just to greet somebody before you're seated? We got an announcement video that will be on the screen. and. Let's just believe God to continue to have his way in this place. God bless you. This is Pastor Charlie coming to you live, representing Student Life at Lakeview Church. Student Life is excited about Frontier Winterfest on January 21st to the 23rd in Arlington, Texas. This life-changing weekend is designed for junior high and high school students to experience God's presence and to be inspired to be a light for Jesus in their families, schools, and daily lives. The cost of this three-day event is 200, including entrance to the Winterfest services, hotel accommodations, and a special trip to Medieval Times on Saturday. We are seeking sponsors to help offset the cost for families who might not be able to send their students to Winterfest. If you would like to invest in the lives of our students so they can experience Winterfest, please contact me or any pastoral staff at Lakeview. Thanks for supporting our students' lives through the Ministry of Student Life. time if you love Jesus in this place would you just lift his name up and give him some praise thank you Lord to God be the glory uh, I want to just say welcome uh, we have several new faces and I got to meet a few of you before service but uh, even if I did I want to let you know we have connection cards available and, and I would be so grateful if you would take the time to fill one of those out they can be found in the seat pockets around you and uh, Miss Mia is the leader of our first impressions team would y'all give Mia a big hand 
And uh, you can take your connection cards to her. She'll be at the information table outside. And we've got a, a special gift for you just to say thank you for being with us. And uh, you can also put prayer requests. Uh, even if you're not a guest, use the connection card to fill out a prayer request. Or if you'd like to be water baptized, you can designate it on there. Or if you need to update information, all that's available. And uh, we just we love to get to connect with our people. And we thank you for being with us today. I also want to remind you uh, that we've got three ways you can give here at Lakeview. And man, because of your giving, God is just expanding our ability to reach people with the gospel. Uh, you can give online at lakeviewpeople.com slash give. You can use the text to give number, which will be on the screen, or it can be found at the website, lakeviewpeople.com. And uh, also, we have offering envelopes available here. We don't pass a plate, uh, so you can just put those in the offering boxes on your way out if, if you have a gift to give. And I just want to say thanks to all those who served in, in the trunk and treat we had here in Iowa Park on Wednesday night. And then we did it again uh, last night in Vernon, Texas. It was awesome. And so I'm excited that next week we get an extra hour of sleep because I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> next week we fall back. And so make sure and uh, do that or else you might accidentally end up at the first service. And that'd be okay. Uh, but next week you set your clock back an hour and we thank you for that. But can, can I just tell you before we get into the message, a, a praise report from our trunk and treats. Uh, here at Iowa Park, uh, we were so excited last year. It was our biggest one we'd ever had. We had about 500 people come through. So I thought by faith, I'm going to have 500 registration cards out. And I, I did registration this year. And we went through 500 cards in about 30 minutes. Uh, we had well over 1,000 people come out Wednesday night. It was incredible. And got to pray with people, meet people, just show the love of Jesus. And then last night in Vernon, Texas, uh, y'all just did an amazing job. We had people travel from, you know, Iowa Park, Wichita Falls, Electra, Burke Burnett, drive all the way to Vernon to help serve. We had uh, a few there from the, the church there that were there to help us serve. And we just got to love on the community. First time we've ever done anything like that. We're kind of introducing ourselves. So we were hoping for maybe 100 people. That's what I was really praying for. Uh, but by faith, I, I brought 300 of the little uh, registration cards and we were doing doing the registration we gave every one of those away and had to go find a hundred more so we know we had at least 400 we don't really know exactly uh, but we're gonna follow up with people but what I was so blessed with was uh, as doing the registration I had a family several came up and voiced this different ways but one family came up and said uh, they tried to pay they said how much is it to come to this and I said oh no you don't understand this is free and uh, the dad Kind of looked puzzled. He said, okay, well, how much for the hot dogs? How much for food? And I said, no, th that's, that's free as well. I said, this is a giveaway, so we just want to give it away. And uh, he was so touched. He said, I, I don't go to church, but I don't know that I've ever seen a church do this. And uh, he actually asked me, he said, why, do you, why are you doing this? And I'm real proud of my answer. I think the Lord gave me the words to say. I said, we're doing this for you because of what Jesus has done for us. And honestly... What we did last night was really small in comparison to what Jesus has done for us. But I, I got prompted, and, and I want to teach you something here. I'm sorry I'm not even into the message, but the Holy Spirit is a better teacher than me. So let me be obedient to what he's saying. In that moment, I didn't want to miss that moment. And so I asked him if I could pray for him. And I prayed for that man and his family. He bowed his head and crossed his chest. He's Catholic background, he told me. And, and I got to know a little bit. Can I tell you, God will give us opportunities if we're willing to give ourselves to his will and, and be generous to people. And for too long, can I apologize? If anybody watching online or anybody in here, for too long the church has made it about what you can do for us. Y'all, Jesus has already done enough for us. We want to go into all the world and, and be generous people. We've been blessed to be a blessing. And the Bible says, freely you have received, freely give. And that's just a little way we can do that and show that. Thank you for your generosity. God is going to do great things through us if we won't stop his blessing just with us. If we say, God, we know you're giving to us so we can give to others. Amen. And that's what this whole message series has been about. It's called From the Ashes. And it's about embracing the full life of God. And I get so tired of people that have hijacked living what, what it means to live a blessed life. Can I tell you, living a blessed life in God doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have a yacht. But do you know what? If you do have a yacht, that doesn't mean that's a bad thing either as long as you're using it for Jesus. Can somebody say amen to that? Yeah, we got to be fishers of men. You might need a fishing boat. Come on, somebody. 
It's got hijacked both ways. Some people believe that it's all about prosperity and all about getting money and all that. And other people think you've got to be poor and miserable to be a follower of Jesus. Both are wrong. You've got to be obedient. God wants obedience over sacrifice. So again, you don't have to show everybody how rich you are. You don't have to tell everybody how poor you are. You need to show and tell people about Jesus Christ. It ends there. And so we, we're getting back to what really matters. And I'm so, so thankful for people that, that are, one, are, are so willing and, and so open-hearted to the Lord and what God is calling our church to do. Because we're the body of Christ. We are the church. And thank you for being a part of this. And I believe we're already seeing such a great harvest. But we're just getting started. God's just getting started, y'all. And this message today may seem counterintuitive a little bit. It may seem a little bit backwards. Uh, the title of it is Surrender to Win. You have to give up to win. And now this is a spiritual principle. It won't make sense in the natural. I know sometimes it seems like my Dallas Cowboys thought this is something you do in the natural. You just give up and then you'll win. That's not how it works. And I'm thankful this year they're figuring it out. Come on, somebody. They remember, and there's a whole four quarters in the game, and you got to play all of them. That had no spiritual significance. I apologize. I just, I just needed to get that off my chest. But let's talk about what it means spiritually to surrender, to win. What I think is one of the most powerful passages of Scripture is Hebrews 12, 2. And I love the message, the way it puts it. It says, keep your eyes on Jesus who both began and finished this race we're in. That means everything you've ever been through, Jesus has been through from start to finish. Study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything, cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God. And that's where we want to be. We want to follow Christ's example, follow in his footsteps, and, and do what he has called us to do. And that's where I say we have to surrender to win. And in each of these messages, uh, we've looked at just the words of Christ. Can I tell you, when it says study how he did it, you need to listen to the words of Jesus more than you would ever listen to your favorite podcast or even, or even your favorite preacher. Because if they're not preaching Jesus... You need to go read what the Word of God says. Don't listen to the words of people. And we surrender to him. And, and even Christ was our example. We've been looking at the words that he spoke in his life, and especially in the final moments of his life. Because some of you, you know what it feels like to feel like life is over, life is hopeless. You, you, something tragic has happened, and you just feel like you're about to give up. In Luke chapter 23, verses 44 through 46, it says, It was now about the sixth hour. And darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. For the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice. And these were the last words that Jesus spoke in, in his human form. He came back in his glorified body. But this is the last thing we hear him speak in his human nature. He said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. But how many of you know the end of the story? It wasn't really the last. Just because his physical body, his physical time, this earth was done, God's plan for him was far from done. So I want you to uh, fill in this blank with me, but, but more importantly, let the Lord speak to you about how to do this. I want you to surrender your life to God and let it go. And I need to say this before we go any further. Too often in the church, too often we Christians, we, we think that we know better than God or we know more than God and we need to tell God what we need for our life. And if you're really going to surrender your life to God, God may ask you to do things you don't want to do. Jesus did not want to go to the cross. Please don't misunderstand that. He did it because of his love for us in his obedience to the Heavenly Father. It says he even prayed, God, is there not another way? In the final moments, it stressed him so much to the point that he sweat droplets of blood because he was hoping there could be another way. But he surrendered his life to God. So if you want to be a follower of Jesus, it's not all butterflies and sunshine. It's not all just going to be blessings and prosperity. There will be persecution. Jesus promised that. 
So you got to be knowing the, the end from the beginning, that you've got to give him everything. He deserves everything, amen? And too many people, when they give their life to God, what they're really saying is, I'll give you my life if you'll give me what I want. God, I give you my life if you give me the life that I want. And I hope that we'll learn, we don't want the life we want. We need the life God wants for us. He knows better than we know. He says in his word, he knows the plans he has for us, plans not to harm us. We looked at that last week, but to prosper us, to give us a hope and a future. But it doesn't mean you won't go through hard times. It just means you've got a God that's greater than those times on your side. So we surrender our life to God and, and let it go. If we don't let those things go, those things can hold on to us and we'll fall into what I want to call the worry trap. The worry trap. Many of us have been stuck in this. Many of us have been trapped in this to where we're wondering about what's going to happen next and we're, we're so worried about what could happen that we miss what is happening all around us. We miss what God is doing in this moment, in this, in this very present time and Church, I want you to know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And sometimes we get excited about what Jesus did in the past and what Jesus is going to provide for us in heaven in the future. We miss that Jesus came that we could have life more abundant right now today. If you believe that, would you give God a good amen? I really do believe it or I wouldn't say it to you. This worry trap, the psalmist warns of it and talks about being able to be delivered from it. In Psalm 31, verses 4 and 5, he, he says, Free me from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. He said the same words that Jesus said on the cross. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Redeem me, O Lord, the God of truth. See, the psalmist understood there, this was a trap you could fall into and he also understood God is the only one who can bring you through it and get you over it. Now Jesus taught some incredible things in Matthew chapter 6. And here in just a moment we're going to read quite a, quite a large passage of scripture in Matthew 6. But I don't want you to get distracted. I don't want you to get bogged down. I want you, the Holy Spirit to help you hear what the word of God is saying to you. Because... First of all, Jesus gives instruction and warning about falling into this worry trap. Now, he doesn't say those words exactly, but he's showing if you're not careful, you'll put your trust in the wrong things. And when you put your trust in the wrong things, you can end up falling into this trap of fear, of failure, of, of distress and stress. He starts off by saying in Matthew 6, 24, that no one can serve two masters, for you will hate the one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. And he goes on to say, you cannot serve both God and money. And I know people will say, well, I don't serve money. A lot of Christians believe that they don't serve money and they don't realize that they are. The enemy has us deceived sometimes. They say, well, you cannot serve God and money. Well, I'm not doing that. Can I tell you, what is it that you give the most of your time to? Is it to make God happy or to make more money? What is it that you believe is your provision, is your provider? Can I just testify, God doesn't need to wait for the stock market to bounce back for him to have all the supply we would ever need. And again, this message was prepared quite a ways in advance. I, I, I always do that and unless the, the Lord directs me otherwise. But I find it so timely that this message would fall right now. We're about to enter into you know, the holiday season, the Christmas season, the Christmas season. You ain't going to hear no happy holidays out of this man. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. But as we come into this time, some people are concerned because the store shelves seem to be less full than they used to be. They don't have your favorite kind of cat food for your kitty cat anymore. They don't have the favorite brand of Doritos that you enjoy so much. You know, we've been so blessed, y'all, that we've become a little bit spoiled in this nation. Where people are, are just wondering, what's going to happen? Because I can't get, you know, the, the sugar-free vanilla cherry Dr. Pepper that I used to enjoy. They only have plain Dr. Pepper. You know, come on now. We're so persecuted. 
bless your little heart. <laughs> I got news for you. If our worry happens because of those sort of things, our, our trust is in the wrong thing. And I think it's very timely that we would have this message when people are wondering, you know, what if I don't have all the Christmas presents for my kids? Well, maybe then we'd get the opportunity to tell them what Christmas is really supposed to be about in the first place. You know, sadly, sometimes the Grinch does a better job of of explaining to people the meaning of Christmas than Christians do. And we shouldn't let the Grinch be doing our job for us. We need to remind people what this is really all about, what following Jesus is really all about. We don't want to fall in that worry trap where we're, we're trying to serve both God and money. Notice it doesn't just say you'll try to serve only money. Christians will think, well, I'm serving God, but where's your faith really at? Jesus goes on to say, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? And can I answer that question for you? Yes, you are. Here's another question. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Let me answer, the Hebrew word for that is no. But you know what I can warn you is worry can take your life from you. It'll add stress, which will take away your health, your peace of mind, your relationship with people. It'll destroy the quality of life and can even destroy your life physically. Worry is no good. So, So he goes on to say, and why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, and yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. Let me explain this a little bit, because I know we live in sort of the Texoma area. Imagine if mesquite trees were pretty, okay? That's what these flowers, they're called flowers, and they grow. Google it, look look at a painting, but they're beautiful. Just trust me. I know we don't really have a lot of them around here, but you get the idea. But God God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers, it says. And if he cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown in the fire or mowed over or whatever, he will certainly care for you. And then this is what Jesus said. Why do you have so little faith? And this is the message I believe Christ wants the church to hear and the question he wants posed to the body of Christ. Why do you have so little faith? Why do you think... Because people started acting crazy that God's not going to still be God. Why do you think because the government's acting a fool that all of a sudden God doesn't know how to fix all the damage they may be doing? i tell you, God's not waiting on people to elect him. They can't steal an election from him. He is the authority. He is God. He is king. He is Lord. That's not a political statement. Don't try to make it something it's not. It's a spiritual statement. Jesus is king regardless of who is in charge of some human government. And so we need to put our faith in him, and we need to start doing this next thing, which is letting go. Just let go of those things that you've been holding on to that you haven't realized have really been holding on to you. And they've been holding you back from receiving. Sometimes we hold on to so much worry and and anxiety and stress that we don't realize we're holding on to those things, and we don't have our hands open to receive what God wants to give to us, what he wants us to have. Do you think God wants you to live in worry and stress and confusion? No, he does not. In fact, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, the word of God says, don't worry about anything. And I know that feels like a tall order. That can feel impossible. And you know what? With your own ability, it is. But with God, all things are possible. Because God gives instruction. He doesn't just throw this out there and say, well, don't worry about anything. Time and time again, you see this in Scripture. When God asks us to do something that to us humanly is impossible, he gives us a spiritual mandate and principle and and guide. He says, instead of doing that, here's one of those instead moments. He says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs. So can I just encourage you? Can I challenge you? Quit telling everybody your problems and start telling God your needs. And trust in, he says, if you do this, anybody believe God will keep his word? 
Yes. So if you've got worries, if you've got stresses, if you've got anxieties, you have not given them to God yet because God says, if you do this. Now, again, I've said this time and time again, and I want to reiterate it and reinforce this, that God's love is unconditional, but many of the promises of God are conditional. They have conditions. This is one of them. If you'll put that back on the screen for me, it says, if you do this, you will experience God's peace. So if you're not experiencing God's peace, you ain't doing this. You're worrying about stuff, and you're not praying about everything. And it says it's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. So you may be like, I don't even know what it could feel like to not be worried about this. It's better than you could ever think. I love how the message puts that, that scripture. It says uh, something amazing about a, a scripture in just a moment. Here, here's what th- this will cause to happen in you. If you believe that this peace is far more uh, wonderful than the human mind can understand, then you'll do this first thing. Number one, you will get to know God. See, this is more than just like something we put on a banner. I mean, and you'll see it. We'll, we'll put it on T-shirts. And, and can I just do a little plug? We've actually got brand new Lakeview shirts in. Don't, don't they look so handsome? Yeah. Uh, these are available. Mia's got the information, or you can find her or my wife Victoria after church, and they can get you. We have them in the building. They came in Friday and hot off the presses. Well, they're not really hot anymore because it's cold outside, but uh, we'd love for you to, to get one and to wear it around, tell people about uh, what God is doing in your life and doing through this body of believers here. But when it comes to the peace of God, some people don't know peace yet because they don't really know God very well. So they might know religion, they might know church, but they don't know God. You need to get to know God. And we say this all all the time. This is our first step in our discipleship process. We want to make sure people know God. You need to make sure you know God. Not just about him or what we've talked about him, but you talk to him yourself. You know him yourself. When you do that, I'm going to go back to Matthew 6. We read all that in Matthew 6. Look at the following verses, verses 31 and 32. Jesus says, So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. The way the message puts that last scripture is so powerful to me. People who don't know God in the way he works worry over these things. And that's the truth. Y'all, we shouldn't behave. We're supposed to be a peculiar people. They're supposed to look at us and say, how come you're not so worried? Why, why, why aren't you worried like the rest of us? And we'll say, it's because we're trusting in someone different than the rest of you are. Buddha can't do this for you. Muhammad can't provide this for you. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, to live this life that can only be found in him. To get through this life with the leading of the Holy Spirit. To say, God, it really doesn't matter what the enemy throws at me because I know what you provided for me. People who don't know God, they worry over this, this small stuff. And if you really know God, if you really do, then you'll do the second thing. This is how you let go of those things that are holding on to you and how you get out of the worry trap. Number two, put God first in every area of your life. Put God first in every area. And I have to say this. I have to challenge some people, specifically parents. And this means if you got children in your home or even grown children, can I tell you, kids should learn to put God first in the home first. That should be the first place they see it. Because they're around you a lot. And can I tell you, we need to quit trusting the public schools to teach them this. They're not going to. We, don't, we sure don't need to trust culture. In Hollywood, what they're producing in movies is not going to produce what they need to have happen in their spirit and in their life. They need to see your example. Can I tell you uh, why, why I felt so impressed to pray for people this morning? The Lord instructed me that way. We've got bracelets that say pray first on them. We do this you know, every year. We have 21 days of prayer. We do every January. We actually do it twice a year because we think we need to pray a lot because God is our source. But we start off the year with a time of prayer and fasting. We'll do this again in January. We call it our Pray First initiative because we want prayer to be our first priority, not some last resort. It's the first response 
to everything that life throws at us. And imagine how that would change your life if you really lived that way. If you prayed about things before you got worried about them, before you got, I'd be like, I ain't even got time to worry about that till I pray about that. So put God first in every way. Your kids need to see you doing this. They need to see you respond in traffic this way. Pray for that person before you wave to that person. I've done it. Don't, don't judge me, you Christians. We need to not let our emotions control our decisions. Decisions lead and then our emotions follow. Our feelings will follow. So put God first even when you don't feel like it. Can I tell you, moms and dads, I know a lot of times one or more or both, both of the parents sometimes have to work. And when you get home, you're just tired and you don't really feel like interacting with your kids. Can I tell you, you need to be interacting with your kids about spiritual things. You need to read the Bible with them. You need to pray with them. Say, I don't know... I don't know, you know, even where to start. You better find out. Give me a call. I'll give you a starting point. Can I tell you, just do something. Because I tell you what, the enemy knows where to start. Getting into their minds and planting things into their spirit. They're, they're being faced with questions and decisions, the likes of which our, our world has never seen. And so we need to be praying for them. But hear this, we need to be praying with them. They need to be a part of it. They need to know how to reach God and touch God themselves. How to, to, to study the word for themselves. So let them see you put God first in your life. Don't just tell them how to do it. Show them how to do it. That's what real discipleship is. And when, when you do that, here's another promise of God. Matthew 6. We're staying in that chapter. Matthew 6, 33. Jesus said this. So I take him in his word. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Matthew 6, is such a powerful scripture. And I tell you right now, I know there's a lot of things that are wrong in this world, but I'm not as worried about being right as I'm concerned with God's righteousness. I want to be obedient to him more than win an argument with other people. I want to win souls for the kingdom. And that should be our priority as the church is, you know what? I ain't got time to talk to you about my politics. I'm going to talk to you about Jesus, and I believe the Holy Spirit will deal with your politics if they're all out of whack. I ain't got time to talk to you about your decision if you can't decide if who you are or what you are, what identity you are. Let me introduce you to the one who created you. And I believe the Holy Spirit can speak to your heart about if you got confused about your gender, you got confused about your sexuality, there's someone who is not the author of confusion, and that is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the creator of your soul. And I believe God can deal with people better than people can deal with people. So we need to speak where the word of God speaks and be silent where it's silent. We will not compromise the truth. We will not deny that people are sinners and need, need salvation. We're not going to water down the gospel or change the message. But we need to change our attitude sometimes. We need, to, we need to put God first before we put ourselves first. And say, I need to prove I'm right in this argument. I need to prove I'm right in this social media post. No, I want to seek the righteousness of God. And can I tell you, some people are so ready, even Christians, they're so ready to defend their rights. I'm defending my rights. Stand up for his righteousness in your life first. God's the one who's going to protect us. Can't nobody take nothing from me that God wouldn't let them have. That he'd say, you didn't need it anyway. I believe that with all my soul. And so... When you know God and you put him first, you can begin to, to have this kind of perspective, this final truth. You need to live one day at a time. And so many of you probably know this. You, you know that things can change in an instant. And I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to pull on your emotions. I'm not trying to. I, I just want to speak what God told me to speak. Some of you know the, the trauma of a phone call, of, of hearing, you know, someone you love has died, uh, an accident, a, a, a terrible situation, a tragedy. You know how that just changes, your whole life just changed in a moment. You know what it's like for the doctor to say, come back with a report that you weren't expecting or weren't wanting to hear, and all of a sudden, everything, all priorities have shifted. You know how much a moment can change. 
So you need to learn to live one day at a time. Because so many people, you have faced trauma. You've been through crisis. You've been through such hurt and heartache and difficulty that you're almost afraid of tomorrow. You're like, what if something like that happens again? I can't go through that again. And you live so in fear. You live so guarded and reserved. You're trying to protect yourself from all those things. I want to tell you what the Word of God says in Matthew 6, 34. It says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So here's what I want to encourage you and challenge you to do. Don't you worry about tomorrow. You make tomorrow worry about its own self. Can somebody say amen to that? Because you know who holds tomorrow. And look, I know this time of year represents some things that aren't good. Spiritual darkness. <laughs> I got told one time something, I don't remember, a witch or a Wiccan or a witch doctor. Or I don't know. I don't know which it was. <laughs> Can't remember. They actually called the church to let me know they were putting a curse on me. <laughs> that was so kind of them. You know, and, you know, I was like, I appreciate the convenience call. This time of year, the forces of darkness try to rear their ugly head and show how big and bad they are. And aren't they cute? They don't know the God we serve. He's not really concerned about them. And so we shouldn't be concerned about all this stuff. And Halloween, this is Halloween Day. And what it's supposed to be is the Day of the Dead. I'm really thankful to get to testify that we follow the one who didn't stay dead. This is the day of the one you couldn't kill, devil. The one who gave his life for us, but then didn't stay in the grave. He rose again, and he's alive forevermore. There's an old song. I don't know. I must be getting old or tired or something. I've been singing old songs a lot. You know, don't judge me, you Christians. But you might remember that song, Because He Lives. Do you know how to play that song? I should have warned you. <laughs> I didn't even do this at first service. Do you remember that? Because he lives. Because he lives, Clint can play the piano. Come on, somebody. Do y'all remember this? That's it. I can face tomorrow. Yeah. Because he lives. Thanks for keeping it low key. Make it ominous. There you go. <laughs> Y'all, sometimes we sing songs so much that like the truth of them, it's like it loses its potency. We get callous to what it's really saying. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I can't face tomorrow because my bank account says I can, because my own abilities or my own smarts or whatever says I can, but it's because Jesus says I can. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Where Christ has come, all fear should have to flee. You should be set free from that. And the Bible says, whoever Jesus sets free is free indeed. Because I know he holds the future. That life is worth the living. You don't have to live miserable. This is not some prosperity message. This is a message of Jesus Christ. Don't get it twisted. It may not always be easy, but it will always be abundant life. That's what the Bible says. He said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundant. That means fulfilling. And there's going to be purpose to it. Just like we shared last week, there's a purpose to your pain and an end to the, to the pain that you've been going through. Your struggles have a purpose and your pain has an end. Jesus knew that. That's why he was able to carry on through the cross. So I want to give you this final truth. You need to know God and put him first and live one day at a time. And when you do that, you'll learn to let go of your worries. And to let go of your worries, you must let God have your worries. And that means no take backs. 
Don't do what little kids do. Olivia, the other day, we've gone to like 37 different fall festivals or Halloween community events, whatever, trunk and treats, and she had some candy, and I wanted some the other day, and she gave me a pack of M&Ms. I like the little, you know, it's the fun size. She gave it to me. As I started eating them, she goes, wait, don't eat them all. I want some. So I'm like, you're going to take, you've got a whole bag. You're going to take back my M&Ms. And she did. She took them back and poured them in her hand. She just watched me. I'm just staring at her, trying to, you know, convey my sadness. My six-year-old daughter took my M&Ms. And you know what? In a minute, she already poured them in her sweaty little hand. She took them. She poured them back in that bag and handed me the bag. And you know what? I didn't really want to eat no sweaty M&Ms, but I wanted to teach her a lesson, so I ate them anyway. And I thanked her. I said, thank you for giving all that to me. Don't we do that to the Lord? We say, God, you can have all my problems, but we don't even hit the parking lot before we're worrying about them already. What are you worrying about if you gave them to God? Do you think he doesn't know how to solve them? Do you think he needs your help? Again, worry won't add anything to your life, but it'll sure take a lot of things away from you. So know that truth. To let go of your worries, you must let God have them and let him have them all. Now this time, I'm going to ask our First Impressions team is going to hand out our communion elements. They're going to going to serve them to you and we're going to partake in something so important and so powerful because of what it represents it's a command in the word of God that we would partake in communion together to remember what Jesus has done for us and church can I just remind you that if Jesus would do all of what he did for us on the cross he's not going to stop helping us now If he did all that, he's still going to do what he says he will do. And the promises of God are greater than the problems of this life. If you believe that, would you give God a good amen? Yes, amen. While they're serving you in the the elements, I I want to, to give you some instruction. Because what we're doing is so important, you should not and must not take it lightly. So I want you to know, we... We practice open communion here. You don't have to be a member of Lakeview to partake, but you do need to be a follower of Jesus because we don't want you to partake of it lightly or in the wrong way. The Bible warns against that. And please listen to these words. They won't be on the screen, but just hear these words from Scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It says, So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. So as they're passing these elements out, as they're uh, serving you at your seats there, will you do something very serious with me? very important will you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart and reveal to you if there's anything in in, in you that that you need to make right before God hold nothing back from Him and if you need to give your life to Jesus, this is a prime opportunity if you need to rededicate your life to the Lord, this is a great chance to do that but would you just allow the Lord to speak to you, let the Holy Spirit reveal things in you. Would you bow your heads, bow your hearts with me? And let's just right now give to God anything that would be standing between our relationship with Him. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love for us. And thank you for showing your love by sending your only Son to live and die for us. I pray right now, God, for you to forgive us of our sins. Lord, we repent of all the ways we have failed you and sinned against you. When we've been disobedient to you, God, we ask for your forgiveness. And I thank you for your word in 1 John 1, 9 that says, when we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we right now receive that cleansing power by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We receive it and believe it in Jesus' name. And all in agreement said, amen. Amen. They've got just a few more people they're serving. I want to ask if you would to take the bread with me and listen to the example given in Scripture. 
by the Apostle Paul. He said, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you join me in giving thanks for the body of Christ that was broken for us? Jesus, thank you. Thank you for paying a price that you didn't have to pay and for enduring pain you did not deserve. It should have been ours. We thank you for your body that was broken for us, for the stripes that you took on your back for our healing. We do this in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, would you partake in the bread with me at this time? In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. If you would take the cup in your hand now. Saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Would you join me in acknowledging the blood of Jesus that was spilled for our salvation. And that gives us the new covenant of grace through faith in Christ alone. Jesus, thank you giving your life for your precious blood that washes away our sin. We do this in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, would you join me in taking the cup? Please listen to the final words of Scripture I'm going to read about what we've just done. The Word of God says, for whenever you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I believe, church, that Jesus could return at any moment. All the prophetic things are being fulfilled right before your eyes. And I believe the rapture could happen today. But until he does return, let us be about the Father's business as Jesus was. Sharing the good news. Warning people. Of, of the times that we're living in, but letting them know there's hope in Jesus Christ and they can place their faith, their trust in Him. I want to ask the prayer team to come and ask everybody to stand with me all over this place. And I hope you never get tired. Well, I really don't care if you do or not. We're going to do it anyway. I don't want you to think we pray too much, but church, the Word says, Jesus said, my house will be called a house of prayer. Not of preaching or of music, but of prayer. So we always want you to know these altars are open. At any time that you need prayer, we stand ready to pray for you. If you're online and can't be here in person, send in your prayer needs. We want to pray with you. We want to stand in agreement with you. If you have a need that you, you want us to be in agreement with in your life or somebody you love, we'd love to pray for you before we go. I'm going to pray a prayer of dismissal, but I want to encourage you. I want to ask you anything you've given to God in this place. Let it go. Give it to God. Let God have it. And know that he is going to do what his word says in Romans 8, 28. He'll work together all things for good to those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. I believe that and I speak that over you in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. And if you need prayer, move from where you're at whenever, whenever you're ready. And we stand ready to pray for you. And then I'll dismiss you and we'll stay and pray as long as you need. God bless you. Lord, I thank you so much for your word that it never returns void. So I just speak that it will do the work you want it to do in our hearts and in our lives. Let us now be messengers, witnesses for you and ambassadors of Jesus Christ everywhere we go. I speak it over your people in the name of Jesus. And all in agreement said, one more time, would you join me in giving God praise if he's been good to you in your life. And go with God, church. You're dismissed. If you'd like a t-shirt, we'll get them to you. Mia's in the back. And if you got a connection card, please give it to me. we got a special gift for you. God bless you. Go with God. Peace, man.